congratulations. Okay, now, can I get you to come forward? Okay. Don't talk to me, talk to them because they'll kill me otherwise. Um, and would you first say your name and spell it so that they've got it on, so we all have it on tape. I'm Sherry Johnson, S-H-E-R-I, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. How do you pronounce Sherilyn? Sherry Lynn? No, I, I'm just Sherry. You're Sherry. Uh, there's Sherilyn I feel who's the, <laughs> someone else. Okay, now, you, you began your argument today by sort of summarizing what the facts were here. Can you do that for us? Yes, I think when you look at all of the evidence in the case, cumulatively, the only plausible interpretation is that Doug Evans began jury selection in Flowers 6 with an unconstitutional end in mind, to seat as few African American jurors as he could. And the evidence of that is included in his history, in the disparate questioning, in his disrespectful treatment of African American jurors, uh, and in the flimsy, ridiculous reasons he gave for striking them. So, let me get you to move up a little bit. I'm sorry? You want? No, I'm not going to put. No, I've been here for 40 years, guys. Just, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm, All right. So, what were the numbers? Would you just look at them? What were the numbers? In the first four trials, Doug Evans used 36 out of 36 strikes to get rid of African-American jurors. And in the last trial, he struck all but one African-American juror. But in at least the two trials were, that were hung, this is where I'm, I'm confused, there were African-American jurors. But not because he didn't strike them, because there were so many qualified African-American jurors that he could not strike all of them. I see. So. You know, uh, Justice Alito was giving you a hard time because he said, look, if you didn't have all of this stuff in the first five trials, would we still think that this, uh, this sixth trial was, um, was violated the rules on jury selection for racial discrimination? And you, you, say, and you said you can't, you, basically you, you can, but you, you shouldn't disentangle it. You can't disentangle it. I didn't interpret him as giving me a hard time. I think he asked the question of, without the evidence of history, uh, would, would we still have established racial discrimination? And the answer to that is yes. But the, the history of Doug Evans, his willingness to violate the Constitution, willingness to say untruthful things, that certainly is a fact that has to also be considered. What about, what would you say should happen now? I think even uh, the Attorney General made the comment that maybe having this DA try the cases was not the best idea, but at the end he, he was convicted and four people were murdered. So what now? That's not for me to say, but I, I will offer my personal opinion that six trials is extraordinary to hung juries. Um, I would hope they would think about it. What did you make of what Justice Kavanaugh was saying? I don't make anything of what justices say. I was grateful for their attention and their familiarity with the record. A question from Clarence Thomas at the end there, asking the counterpoint that the defense used its peremptory strikes on white jurors. Well, as Justice Sotomayor pointed out, the defense only had the opportunity to strike one African-American juror because Doug Evans struck the rest of them. But the real point is that her motivation is not relevant here. The motivation that matters is that of Doug Evans, and he wanted to get rid of as many African-American jurors as he could, and that's an unconstitutional end. I'm not going to predict what they'll decide. I think they were receptive, and I hope that they will decide uh, that the Mississippi Supreme Court was clearly erroneous in its finding. So, so if this case is, a, is an outlier, which is what you were saying, um, what the Chief Justice asked you and other justices asked you is, what kind of a rule can we have to prevent outliers like this? Well, no new rule is needed. The rule that's needed, this court has also already laid down, which is that there has to be a sensitive inquiry into evidence of discriminatory motivation. And hopefully that will not produce anything in most cases, but 
where there is a prosecutor who's a mind to discriminate, a court has to be looking for the fact that he may try to conceal that. Do you think okay. Mr. Flowers is innocent? I don't think my opinion of that is relevant, but yes, I do. And I think I'll stop there. Thank you. Well, I tried to get her to talk to